Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're new, I welcome you all. I'm SB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness, which is sharing my life stories with Asperger's Syndrome, OCD and the like, along with tips and tricks along the way on how to manage and cope with your everyday personal struggles, be it your mental health versus maybe just your, you know, everyday physical health. So, and it has been brought to my attention, obviously, that I'm trying to continue on of the continuation of autism and some of it may be, you know, a bit iffy of some of those topics I'm going to share based on that playlistings, but it needs to be clearly addressed, obviously. So put a trigger warning out there just in case if some of them will come into effect of that effect. And also, just to be in mind, I'm going to take a break for a little bit of the psychopath slash narcissist series even though it's going to be a bit more broader and wider like many of the mental health series that needs to be tidied up but that's fine because we'll learn something along the way hopefully so obviously as i said be before that i'm trying to do as much as i can on this before obviously even though we're coming close to the month of autism awareness month i'm still doing some um research based on how I feel about autism awareness versus, you know, acceptance. My food for thought of it, you may have heard of it, of differences, opinions by some other autistics, you know, which is fair enough. I know that sometimes, you know, people may, you know, whinge, sigh or throw in the towel with me. It's complaining that, you know, you've heard it before, but I'm sorry, but some of those needs to be said, obviously, especially for some of the topics that's close to my heart that I may be nitty gritty, especially because obviously at the end of the day, and at the end of the day you never know who, who's around the corner that could be your loved one or someone that is struggling and we didn't know about it. So as a disclaimer before I continue this and all is that I'm no medical doctor, I'm just your normal everyday Joe vlogs, sharing my life stories with a species of syndrome but if you see any of the warning signs and symptoms in regards to the topics that I've shared in the present or the past as well, please seek medical help for yourself or your loved one or seek, you know, seek an opinion if you don't think it's deemed fit and also when I do give some tips and advice also just to be in mind that you know some of it worked for me and I know for a fact that many people may have different ways of managing and tr treating their own you know health conditions but it's a matter of give and take and obviously also at the end of the day also within this give and take strategy if you feel to follow through step by step of some of the tips and advice I give you just be sure that to do it more than just once because it's not sure could be your fix and whatnot just to bear in mind because obviously it's part of us of whatever it is that we're going through but obviously try not to as they say to find us also just to be in mind also that when when you see these warning signs obviously i don't forever condone any self-harm or anything like that i just want you guys to be happy and all that so in all for the do guys basically i humbly apologize if some of this may sound repetitive as of the now, because obviously, as I said before, I'm sharing this into two parts, which is autism and self-harm. This one's obviously part two, even though I may have done an introductory part of it somewhere in my autism playlists, I recommend for you to have a look at that if you want to. This one's part two, obviously, that children that purposely injure themselves. So let's begin this before I run out of time. So this one, as I said, this self-injury, okay, can be called also self-harming and self mutilation which is often a coping mechanism particularly with the feeling of being rejected by their peers or just being rejected somehow from whatever has been going on. This is a particular problem for anyone who has difficulty in understanding non-verbal communication like the autistics or anybody for that matter. It's not just for people that suffer from mental health and whatnot, you know, um, due to their low self-esteem you know, self-harm is obviously real widespread on this grand scheme of things of people who does this. However, just to be in mind, for most people, understanding facial expressions, body language, etc. is extensive, starting as babies before language acquisition. But just as some people having hearing difficulties or are short-sighted or colorblind, others have difficulty with interpreting the non-verbal signs, which most people are continuously example wise when to speak and when to stop whether people agree or disagree with us whether others find us amusing or dull etc etc these cues aren't obviously understood by many young people with Asperger's syndrome or autism the inability to understand non-verbal cues is not immediately obvious though however it has become an obstacle for most of us that gets in the way of social interaction when we engage with you a lot 
when we talk to you and just, you know, communicate and socialize. However, most suspicious kids and teens can learn how to cope with this. Many teach themselves without realizing that they're not getting all the information that is readily available. But it gets more difficult, obviously, when we reach adult adolescence or teenagers years because obviously it comes into when we want to fit in, blend in and actually be a part of the group and whatnot. And obviously, you know, this becomes more important important to us obviously or that has autism or species of syndrome to try and fit in and try to make friends and whatnot, even though yes it's done hard for us obviously to make friends and make ends meet. This is obviously a give and take of a social interaction that requires a skill in picking up non-verbal messages that especially as kids and teens struggles with. Even though their understanding of what has been discussed will be as good as anyone's. As a result many of these young people may often get isolated or even bullied which is most common. By the time they reach their teenage years most SBs will realise they are fundamentally different to their peers at school but unless they are diagnosed they will not forever understand to why. Being rejected by the peers over and over again does serious psychological and emotional damage to young people with Asperger's syndrome as well as autism. Not surprisingly many will become severely depressed and may result to self injury. As frightening as it can be for the parents however self injury among youngsters on the autism spectrum disorder isn't all that common however. Just to be a note, not all self-injury means the same thing on every occasion, nor is it the same for in every SB that goes through this. The first thing a parent should do is decide if self-injury is giving their son or daughter some pleasure or if the injury is their way of trying to tell the parent something. Example was, a younger child may be repeatedly banging his head against the wall due to an ear infection. Self-injury can also be triggered by excessive arousal, example why certain frequencies of sounds may trigger this form of behaviour. This becomes the parent's job to reduce the external noise and other arousal issues that can trigger the onset of self-injurious behaviours. On the other hand, however, the youngster with Asperger's syndrome or autism may likely be using this form of behaviour to bring on a heightened sense of stimulation to their bodies. A child like this needs training and sensory integration to normalise these senses, however. Other kids, as well as teens, however, will engage in self-injury as a social means of getting attention or as a means of avoidance during a task, but just to be in mind, it's not always attention behaving. It could be other things, too. In this case, the attention getting behaviour should be in mind, and the youngster who uses the behaviours to avoid getting out of a task should be encouraged to finish the task. The trick to any unusual behaviours is to do a functional analysis as I said before in the first part, what happens before, during and after their behaviours. Is this a routine behaviour, something that has been learned for example? What are the environmental stresses that are present during their behaviour? What if anything controls their behaviour? Answering these questions will give you a clear meaning and understanding of managing these behaviours in most cases as I said before. Self-harming behaviours are actions that the young person performs as a result of physical injury on their own body, however. Typical forms of their behaviour may include of the following. Biting oneself, burning themselves, cutting themselves with a knife or a razor blade, head banging, hitting oneself with hands or other body parts, head banging, or shall we say picking at skin or sores I should say, scratching or rubbing oneself repeatedly, Carving, branding, marking, abrasions, bruising, pulling the hair, punching walls. Obviously, the cause of self harming behaviours in aspects may remain a mystery today, however, but there needs to be more research done and understand why this is happening. And obviously, they are doing it now, but still, there's still no answers to this, it's, it remains a mystery. But it has been thought, however, by some researchers that these behaviours may be caused by a chemical imbalance, attention seeking, ear infection, frustration, headaches, sensory, seeking sensory stimulation, inputs, seizures, sinus problems, sound sensitivity, or escape or avoidance of tasks. Why does self injury make some aspects feel better? Obviously, when it comes down to it, for us as based, many of us or some of us may f feel a strong, uncomfortable emotional state. 
and we don't know how to handle that situation, doesn't have a name for it, and knowing that when we're hurting ourselves, will reduce the emotional discomfort very quickly. This may still feel bad, but they we don't have the panicky, jittery, trap feeling, obviously, when we do this. It's a calm, but bad feeling at, all at once. Some of the signs and symptoms of self-injury to, to look out for are red flags for cutting or self-injury be, like behaviours may include the following. Changes in eating behaviour habits for themselves. This could mean they're being secretive about their eating or unusual weight loss or gain, such as your eating disorders that can be associated with self-harm. Covering up their, you know, wounds and whatnot of while they've done the, you know, self-harms. Frequent accidents. Someone who self-harms may claim to be clumsy or have many mishaps in order to explain away injuries. Indications of depression, such as your low mood, tearfulness, lack of motivation or loss of energy can be signs of depression that may lead to self-injury. Unexplained wounds. A self-harmer may have fresh or scars from cuts, bruises or cigarette burns or whatever it may be, usually on the wrist, arms, thighs or chest. What can be done to prevent self-injurious behaviours? Cause and intervention. Cause. Self-injurious behaviours is driven by a chemical imbalance or medical condition as I shared before. Intervention. Treat the child with appropriate medications that will be well suited for their needs. Cause, self-injurious behaviour is often driven by attention-seeking like behaviours. Intervention, use tactile, tactical, ignoring of self-injurious behaviours. Give child attention for appropriate behaviour when it occurs. Encourage other behaviours that makes the self-injurious behaviour impossible to perform. Example, encourage the child to manipulate toys which keeps their hands occupied and prevents that face slapping like behaviours. Cause, self-injurious behaviour is driven by frustration. Intervention, teach frustration tolerance. Give the child constructive things to do before, you know, to prevent this boredom. Teach coping skills and relaxation techniques. Cause, child is seeking sensory stimulation input. Intervention, find a replacement behaviour that will meet this need in a less destructive way. Cause, which I'll list those soon of this, what to do instead of them to do self-injury. Just bear with me. Cause, child wants to escape or avoid a task. Intervention, private an escape route for the child, e.g. a safe time out room corner, provide an alternate task and give options. For example, child doesn't want to pick up his stuff in his room, this, then he picks up another tool from a child of chores. Self-injurious behaviour is driven by sound sensitivity. Intervention, provide earplugs, remove child from the source of the sound, remove the sound or reduce the sound levels that is causing them to act in this like behaviours. One theory has suggested that SBs that injure themselves do so to release opiate-like chemicals in the brain. Naltrexone is the medication that inhibits these releases of these opiate-like chemicals in the brain and the belief is that this will remove the reason for their self-injury. What else can be done with the child of yours or teens that are SBs that do self-injure themselves? For, num for starters, don't judge. Avoid judgmental comments or telling the SB to stop the self-harming behaviour straight away. Two, encourage. Encourage expressions of emotion, including anger and the like. Examine and change. If the self-harmer is obviously your child, prepare yourself to address the difficulties in your family. This isn't about blame, but rather about learning new ways of coping and dealing with family interactions and communications so that it can help the entire family. Find resources. Help their ASB find a therapist or even a support group. If you don't know how to find help, encourage your loved one to talk to someone who might be able to help, such as someone they may be able to trust as a teacher, school counsellor or your minister. Reassure. Let the ASB know that you care and you are available to listen to them. And then be readily available when they do come to you. Spend time. Spend time doing enjoyable activities together as a family. Understand. It is vital to understand that self-behaving behaviour is an attempt to maintain a certain amount of control, which in and of itself is a self-soothing technique. Here are some of the do's and don'ts when talking to the ASB about self-harming behaviours to be in mind. Do. Talk about the subject of the emotional and physical pain. This way the self injurer can talk about their internal suffering rather than expressing it by hurting themselves again. Ask questions such as, 
Do you want to change your self-injury behaviors? How can I help you? How do you hurt yourself? How long have you been hurting yourself? How often do you injure yourself? Why do you hurt yourself? The don'ts. Try to impose limits. This may increase the SB self-harming behavior in order for them to feel as if they have control over the situation. Don't tell them to not injure themselves. This is a way of, for them to cope. A final attempt to relieve emotional and or physical pain. They will continue to hurt themselves as long as they feel it's necessary. Telling them not to will just make them hide it more from you. Don't keep asking questions if the self injury doesn't wish to talk about their cutting or self harm. It may cause further alienation and then make them feel even more alone and isolated. Obviously, some tips and advice of maybe what you can do for your child or teen that has a species of syndrome to do instead of self injury. One, bite into a hot pepper or two, a piece of ginger root. Three, Break sticks, call a friend and just talk about things that you like. Clean your room or even the whole house. Crank up the music and just dance all away. Do something slow and soothing like taking a hot bath with bath oils or bubbles. Cooling up under a comforter with hot cocoa and a good bit. Babying yourself somehow. Draw on yourself with a red self felt tip pen. Flash in aluminium cans for recycling. See how fast you go, can go as a technique. Go for a walk, jog or run. Hit a punching bag, light a sweet smelling incense, listen to some soothing music, make a soft cloth doll to represent the things you are angry at, cut and tear it instead of yourself, make a tray of special treats and take yourself into bed with it and watch TV or even read, make clay models and cut them or smash them, on a sketch or photo of yourself, mark in red ink what you want to do, cut and tear the picture, paint yourself with red food colouring, Play handball or tennis. Put a finger into a frozen food like ice cream for a minute. Rip up any old newspapers or phone book. Rub liniment under your nose. Slip a tabletop hard. Smooth nice body lotion into the parts of yourself you want to hurt. Snap your wrist with a rip, rubber band. Squeeze ice really hard. Stop around in heavy shoes. Try something physical and violent. Something not directed at a living thing. For example, slash an empty pot plastic soda bottle or plastic heavy cup or, or an old shirt or sock. Well this quickly ends basically autism and self harm part 2 from the clips where you injure themselves. Give me a like for thumbs up for support, comment below, follow me on my social media sites, feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already, feel free to share these videos around to family and friends, like I said these need to be addressed as much as possible so no for the dude guys, thanks for the support, thanks for watching, do what you love, love what you do, until next time, SB signing out, see you again soon, ciao for now.